Um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have been having a very good uh, exhibition and uh, a lot of information. I know it is uh, sometime an overload to keep getting in information. I will try to make it as simple as possible, even though the, the product or the, 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 the topic is a pretty complex one. So we're talking about closing the loop um, from end to end for product and assets, um, which is, in other words, basically called digital twin. So how do you start getting your knowledge base of your organization, knowledge base of your uh, uh, customers into the product so that you are able to continuously keep value or give value to the product. I need to still grab this one. OK. Um, again, a very brief introduction. Basically, together with Siemens, uh, we are on this journey of building that concept, bringing that concept to reality. Um, with MindSphere as the backbone, powered by MindSphere, powered by the entire PLM portfolio of Siemens, from, from uh, product development until manufacturing, and Athos as a system integrator would bring all their assets and know-how into this whole uh, digital twin for PLM. And very consciously we said PLM because it's all about products, which is very dear to our customers. So. What exactly are we talking about? I'm sure you would have seen this one uh, many a times from uh, different stakeholders within Siemens. Um, and this is about closing the loop, starting from ideation through realization until uh, utilization, so that there is a complete transparency all across the product lifecycle to monetize the information, what you get from the field. And uh, upfront, I would like to say, digital twin has been understood very differently by different people. I even encountered people who say that I show uh, a digital model of a physical object and I call it a digital twin. Uh-uh. Is that really a digital twin? It's probably a look-alike, but it is not a twin in the real sense. And our concept of digital twin is getting field data, real-time field data, from the devices, from the assets, and feeding that into the, into the, pla into the product which is, a, which is in a digital form, to keep improving the digital and the physical at the same time. Um, and the use cases can span from product development to manufacturing to, uh, to the after-sales services. Um, moving on, basically, what, what exactly are we talking about? We have the conventional processes, right, from, uh, from concept design to manufacturing to uh, sales and service until the product is retired. So we are trying to build different aspects of digital twin, which is basically to start with a product twin. And when you say a product twin, it is sim simple um, example is if you are driving a BMW and if BMW is producing a car which is going around in, uh, in, in, in uh, wild areas, how do you acquire that information to be able to give it to designer which he can use real time the streaming data and feed it into, a, into the simulation model to do the required uh, simulations and calculations. On the other hand, um, the same BMW example, a BMW 3 Series, BMW plans to come out with a model for 2025, for example, yeah? if there is a concept say, How does an OEM know what percentage of my assemblies, parts, and systems can be reused into my 2025 model? Unless he knows how my today's systems are performing on the field, he has no idea. So exactly this is what we want to fulfill. We want to give him a very clear idea with a very high probability that these systems, assemblies, and components, if reused in your future models, has a high probability of functioning and uh, functioning well. That's all about the product twin. This, next, we come to the process twin. Basically, it's all about uh, manufacturing and uh, manufacturing systems. How do we optimize inbound logistics, outbound logistics? How do we get real-time data from the shop floor and, uh, and elsewhere in the, in, the, in the manufacturing plant to be able to improve our process systems? The last one is performance twin. How do I make sure my services and after-sales support for the customers are continuously improved with new business models? And that's a challenge today, because uh, most of the organizations have been moving from a product-based revenue model to a service-based revenue model. And our customers, and I have heard it many times, are saying, how do I offer service-based revenue model 
how do I increase my percentage of revenue for service models unless I know uh, with high probability that I am able to provide the same services to my customer. Um, I mean, having said that, I would like to um, give you an idea about what we are doing currently. We actually have started on a journey where we are actually doing a prototype, or, a, or you can call it a prototype or a pre-POC, with a wind farm, around 100 wind turbines, which are connected, which, has, which are coming from different areas, different, uh, different uh, uh, houses or different OEMs. And we are able to try to build a value chain all along from the concept stage, from the product owner until the field services. And we are trying to close that loop using MindSphere to be able to do a complete field monitoring system to be able to improve the product on a, on a, on a, on a continuous basis. And this is something which um, we have been doing for the last uh, 18 to 20 months now. And um, we are at a stage where we are engaging with customers, with our customers, where we invest in a customer proof of concept with real data and real systems to be able to show clear, clear value to the customer. So that's something which, um, and here as you see some of the familiar names uh, for some of you who are coming from a PLM perspective, Team Center, Annex, the Sim Center, the complete AM Sim and the Sim, uh, Sim Center portfolio, including AMPS, which is coming from, as, uh, from Athos, mainly for asset and performance management. So these mathematical models are pretty complex ones. And we want to create that kind of ontology for a specific industry so that we are able to connect the dots of what influences the performance of a, a wind turbine or what influences the power production of a wind turbine. At the end, I'm sure the, you have seen videos on YouTube, at the end we want to give um, the customer and the fleet manager a tool on hand to be able to predict how much of power will I produce in the next one month with a high amount of certainty. Considering that we have to do wind models, we have to do simulation on, um, on, 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 on temperature, humidity conditions to be able to give the best curve fit and give them a very predictable way of saying that this is exactly what I will produce because anything below it or above it actually attracts penalties. So. Um, uh, moving on, uh, uh, um, moving on to that, basically, what I wanted to give you a, a high overview on what we are talking about. We are talking about offering a digital transformation with very, very innovative um, business models. And these business models can be pay as you go. It can be a 10% uh, um, uh, reduction in my operating costs. It can be KPIs, which can, which can, which can completely transform the way business will be done. And uh, to make that happen, we need, or we as Athos have been instrumental or have been working with the area around enterprise application for a long time. We have been able to connect those dots, what you call those days as the IT to OT connection. We have been able to do the enterprise plumbing, so to say, in connecting PLM, MES, ERP, end to end. So these, these areas, as you, as you see, are known factor and doing intelligence on top of them also has been around for some time. That means we know how to do intelligence on data which is coming from different sources. And one of the examples which, uh, which is always my favorite example is how many of you think that, um, that when you go to a car, car dealership and you provide information, how many of you think that the OEM is able to get the data with which you indirectly communicate with your car dealer or, or your workshop to be able to improve your future products. Very little, unless you are filling a form and, and, and writing details on it. So our value proposition is moving beyond that to be able to put at the center of that whole enterprise transformation the digital twin. If you have a look alike and a feel alike of a complete product in-house, and um, a favorite example of me is uh, I was in um, uh, with one of the customer, uh, a, a large turbine, a winter uh, um, aero turbine manufacturer in uh, in, in UK. And um, these, I mean, they said that they collect data of all their turbine sensors or across the world, whether it is fit on Lufthansa or Emirates or or, or Etihad or X Y Z. 
they also know when it goes on top of the Middle East, there is a drop, drop in um, performance, right? They know it. But what can they do to make sure that the performance is mitigated in the sense because they are actually not selling turbines mostly, they are leasing turbines and they have um, a KPI against which they need to work, which means they have to fulfill a KPI to upkeep the performance of their turbine. So today we are talking about how do we make sure you are not only gathering information, analyzing information of your turbine, which has gone through a dip in performance, and bring it back and orchestrate it back so that you are able to take mitigative action. And that can be done using some of our new technologies. We are talking about additive manufacturing. We are talking about uh, augmented reality, machine intelligence, deep learning platform, all connected, not to forget the big topic, um, cybersecurity. That's a huge topic for us because uh, I don't think any of you, those who are customers, I don't know how many of you are real end customers who have products in-house, but I would imagine that most of you agree that you would not want to give your data away just like that unless you know that your security has been taken care of. And this is part of our core offering which we will put as part of it. And on top, we also make sure that we are going into the next generation of um, the digital twin where we are dealing with nanotechnologies and smart materials because you know with, uh, with the smart materials you are able to get a, um, a sensory information back which can change the way the material works or the change the way the product itself works. That's exactly what we will take our next generation um, digital twin towards. With that, with that in place, if we have the complete transparency of what, how I can improve my performance between my, um, between my physical product and the virtual product, you are able to confidently offer new business models, which is exactly what digital transformation is all about. I mean, because digital transformation is also very loosely used by people, but unless you are able to offer these value proposition to your customer who actually has aspirations to go into new business models, that would be incomplete from our point of view. So, having, having, having said that, I mean, uh, I would highly encourage uh, for, for you to follow us on, uh, on, on, uh, the, uh, on this track, on this journey together with Siemens. And uh, here we are continuously publishing blogs, we are continuously publishing uh, um, videos. We, are, we will make it very transparent of what we are actually doing with customer because uh, we, the, we are all in a learning phase where we are actually exploring this topic. And the depth of this topic is so enormous that it has to be a collective innovation and a collective um, uh, learning which we can bring to real value to the customer. And happy to discuss this if, if, if anyone wants to have specific discussion about it. We are also, let's call it that way, if my boss is here, they would not like that. We are ready to invest in proof of concept of customer which means we want to do as part of, um, part of this journey a joint value proposition together between we as Athos, Siemens, together with our customer. So if you have any question, I would be ha happy to answer. Otherwise, wish you a very, very good rest of the day. All right, thank you very much, Murli.